So imagine you have a semicircle whose diameter is 10, and then you have this rectangle that's split into two squares and sits on the semicircle in the following way. So the vertices that you see of the square that touch different parts of the semicircle are the natural ones that you think they are. The question here is, what is the area of the rectangle? This was asked by Catriona Ag on Twitter, and many solutions were presented, two of which we'll present here, and they get progressively easier with the third one that I came up with myself. So stay tuned for the interesting solutions to this really interesting geometry problem. Welcome to today's video, I'm Prof Omar. So today we're interested in figuring out the area of this rectangle. We're gonna start off with solution one, which starts at the center of the circle and draws these two radii out to two different vertices of the squares involved. Since they're radii, they're each going to have length 5. Okay, so we're going to label all the critical points that are involved in the diagram, A, B, C, D, and E, that we'll need for later. So one question to ask is, what's this angle that's labeled with the question marks here? If we can figure out what it is, that'll help us figure out the length BE, and then that'll help us in figuring out what the areas of these rectangles are, because we can use BE to figure out the side lengths of the squares. Okay, to figure out that central angle BOE, we can instead infer to what angle BAE is. Because BAE is actually an angle on the circle, angle BOE, the central angle, is twice angle BAE. Now, why would we have hope for finding out what angle BAE is? Well, if you look at the way things are drawn, the points A, B, C, and E all lie on the actual semicircle, and so if you extended it to a circle, these points lie on the circumference of a circle. And so they form a quadrilateral that sits inside of that circle. And that can help us with this angle problem, right? So A, B, C, E itself is a cyclic quadrilateral, right? And what that means is there's this nice property of cyclic quadrilaterals, which is that opposing angles add up to 180 degrees. Now we actually know the measure of angle BCE because it's composed of a right angle together with a 45 degree angle. So it's 135 degrees. And so the angle BAE itself is 180 degrees minus that 135 degrees forming the angle BCE, which then gives us that is 45 degrees. Okay, great. And so the central angle BOE as a consequence, is twice that quantity, right? Which then gives us that it's 90 degrees. So that question mark angle that we're wondering about is actually a right angle. Very cool. All right, so now that we have that this is a right angle, we're set up perfectly to figure out the length of BE, and then subsequently the length of the individual squares, and so the area of the entire rectangle. So let's go ahead and do that. Side BE is going to be, by Pythagorean theorem, on BOE, 5 root 2. Okay, so let's give variables to the lengths of the squares themselves. Maybe we'll call the lengths X, and we'll emphasize that this point F that we just drew here, there's a right angle at it because it comes from a square, right? So if we label BF with the variable X, then... Fe itself is going to be decomposed into x and x as well. And so by Pythagorean theorem on that triangle BFE, we're going to get that x squared plus the quantity 2x all squared is 5 root 2 squared. Okay, so we can simplify this a bit using a little bit of algebra. So on the left hand side we have 5x squared the right hand side we have 50, so we get that x squared is 10. And the thing we're interested in is the area of the entire rectangle, that's twice the area of the squares, right? So the area of the rectangle B, D, E, F is two times x squared, which we figured out is 10 itself, so it's 20 in total. Great. Okay, so this is a cool solution but it really uses a lot of energy, right? So we have to construct this cyclic quadrilateral and then 
use that to find out the central angle that we then find a diagonal of the rectangle that we then use Pythagorean theorem to do. So maybe we can do something that doesn't have so much busy work to be able to figure this out. And we're gonna use a property of what's going on in the diagram in both the second and third proofs. And it's gonna involve this line segment we just drew here. So if we take the center of that line segment, that line segment is a chord. The center bisects it, and there's a theorem in geometry that says that if you have a bisector and you drop the perpendicular down to a diameter, it actually touches right at the radius. But it also goes through this other vertex of the top square that we see because of the fact that it's an actual square and we've bisected a diagonal. So we get that the angle we just drew there is 45 degrees, right? And then we also have a right angle from the square, so that angle we just drew in has to be 45 degrees as well. But we've dropped the perpendicular down to the center. So we have a perpendicular there, and we get that we have a 45 degree angle at this other point, uh, angle as well. Okay, great. So we're gonna use the fact that those two are 45 degrees in both these second proofs, second and third proofs. So let's go ahead with this particular proof here. So we're gonna label this one length x and then the other length is x because we have an isosceles right angle. And then by Pythagorean theorem, the side length of the square is x root two. Now we're gonna draw in from the center to one of the vertices of the square, one of the squares that lies on the semicircle. That radius is gonna be five because the radius of this thing is five. Okay, we have this x length, but then we also have that this other square has length x root two as well. Okay, so uh, we have this angle here because we had the 45 degree angle before is 135. And so we're set up with this triangle that has the side length five opposite the 135 degree angle to do a cosine law. We get five squared is x squared plus x root two squared minus twice x times x root two times the cosine of 135. The cosine of 135 itself is negative one over root two. And so we can uh, do some uh, cleaning up of the situation here. So the root two and the one over root two cancel, the two negatives give us a plus, um, and x root two all squared is two x squared. So together we get that five squared is five copies of x squared. And so this x squared itself is actually five. Okay, um, now this x is different than the x we had before. The side length of the squares are x root two. So the area of the entire rectangle is twice the area of one of these, which is twice the quantity x root two all squared. And that gives us a total of two times two x squared, which is four times the quantity x squared. We figured out x squared is five. So again, we get that the area is 20. Okay, cool. Great, so another solution that doesn't use too many different things going on, but exploits that angle being 45 that we saw earlier. So now in this next proof, this is one that I came up with, we're gonna use symmetry of the picture, right? So what we're gonna do is take this entire picture that we have and redraw it by inverting it, reflecting it across the diameter. Okay, so in doing that, we'd have to draw a semicircle on the bottom to make a complete circle. My semicircles look funny. Um, and then we have these two, this copy of the same picture we had above. So the angle we just drew in has to be 45 degrees because we've reflected. Okay, so what that means is if we look at the long side of this original rectangle and the short side of ours, we have a straight line right over there because we have a 90 degree and then another 90 degree angle. Great, we're gonna use that to our disposal. So let's draw in the side lengths of these small squares, x, 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 x. All right, and then we're gonna draw a chord from this red point to this other red point that we just labeled here. Now if we do that, this chord forms this triangle that has a right angle at when it meets the actual circle. So that means that that chord is actually a diameter. That means it has length 10, and now we have this right angle triangle with hypotenuse 10 that has side lengths all involving the variable x. So we get x squared plus 
the quantity 3x all squared has to equal 10 squared, which then tells us that 10 times x squared is 10 squared itself, and so x squared is 10. Great. And then again, the area of the rectangle then is two copies of this x squared, and so we get a total of 20. Great, so three different solutions, and I thank Katriona Ag for this interesting problem, and the two first solutions, we're gonna uh, attribute the solutions in the notes down below to who those uh, were given to. Um, and this nice last solution that just tops everything off.